Welcome to the Simulation Aware Signal Tap training video. My name is David Garcia and we will go through this training together. In this training, we are going to cover the two main aspects of this new feature the integration between Signal Tap Logic Analyzer and RTL Simulation, and the flow to use this feature. After that, we are going to go through a demonstration. Simulation Aware Signal Tap will only tap on the minimal nodes required to provide you with expanded visibility, around 10 times to 100 times more visibility on a selected design hierarchy. This set of nodes will be intelligently found and added by the Simulation Aware Node Finder. With the acquired data, a simulation testbench can be generated that can be run in an RTL simulation tool. Multiple scripts targeted for different simulation tools will be generated. Run the simulation scripts in your preferred RTL simulation tool and look at the response of elements outside of Signal Tap's visibility, leveraging the power of RTL simulation and further helping in your debugging process. To make use of Simulation Aware Signal Tap, first run Analysis and Elaboration to generate the Design Presynthesis Netlist. Then open Signal Tap and add Simulation Aware Nodes. The Simulation Aware Node Finder will help you find the minimum required nodes to simulate your selected hierarchy. After setting Signal Tap and compiling the design, run Data Acquisition. Finally, generate the simulation testbench with the acquired data and run the simulation with your preferred RTL simulation tool. For this section of the training, we are going to go through a demonstration of how you can use Simulation Aware Signal Tap for your debugging process. We are running this design on the Intel Agile X7 FPGA F Series Development Kit. The design consists of an external memory interfaces IP block, or EMIF for short, which serves as a link to an external memory. The EMIF IP is connected to an EMIF calibration IP block and a traffic generator. This demo will show how Simulation Aware Signal Tap works by tapping on the link between the EMIF IP and the traffic generator. Something specific to this design is that to properly generate traffic between the EMIF and the traffic generator, we will need to access the EMIF calibration toolkit through System Console. First, we need to run analysis and elaboration to get the design presynthesis netlist. We go to the Quartz toolbar and click on the Start Analysis and Elaboration. Now we wait for the process to finish. After analysis and elaboration is finished, we're going to create a new signal tap file. We're going to go to File, New, and select the Signal Tap Logic Analyzer file. You can choose from many templates, but right now we're going to stick with the default selection, which is an empty file. Now, in Signal Tap, we're going to right click on the setup pane and we're going to select the Add Simulator Word Notes. Now the Simulator Word Note Finder will open. We're going to click on this button and we're going to navigate the hierarchy tree to find the hierarchy level that we want to expand visibility on. In this case, will be the connection between the traffic generator and the EMIF IP. We click OK. Now you can see here the hierarchy instances that have been added and the clock domains. And we're going to click search. And now Simulator Word Note Finder will show a list of all the nodes that we'll tap. We're going to click on insert. And you can see that the notes have been added to Signal Tap. We're going to click OK. Now we're going to customize a little bit our Signal Tap file. Uh, we're going to expand on the sample depth. We want a lot of samples. 
and we're going to customize the trigger conditions. Since we are working with Avalon memory map uh, transactions, we are going to, we want to catch the read and write operations. So we're going to select this as our trigger inputs, read and write. And we want to catch them, whether they are, where, whether it's a write operation or a read operation. So we are going to set a basic OR between read or write. Uh, after this is ready, we're going to save this signal tab file, save, and uh, we're going to overwrite this one. Now, when everything is ready, we're going to go and run a full compilation. Now we have to wait for the full compilation to be finished. After full compilation finishes, we're going to go here to the programmer. And we're going to click on auto detect. So it takes the correct uh, JTAG chain. There it is. So we are going to change file. And we're going to select the generated SOF from full compilation. I'm going to click open. There it is. We're going to check the program configure box. We're going to click start. And there it is. We successfully programmed our device. So now we're going to open our signal tab file. We're going to select this. There it is. And we are going to arm our signal tab instance. You can see that the status is waiting for trigger because it's waiting for either of these signals to be on, on an active high. So we're going to go back to quarters. And this is the, the EMIF example design. So to generate traffic, we have to open system console. And we're going to wait for the EMIF calibration toolkit and the traffic generator toolkit to load. There they are. And here it is. We open the toolkit real quick. We're going to activate the interface. There it is. And we are going to run the traffic generator. It's done already. So we go back to signal tab. And now we have data acquired. Now with this data, we're going to go to file and click on create simulation test bench. You can see here the create simulation test bench window. Uh, you can set the directory where you want all the simulation files to be created. And there are a lot of settings that you can configure, like the initial unknown data, uh, some other simulation bands. And we are going to, right now, we're not going to make any change. Uh, we're going to click just OK. Now we wait for it to load. And voila, it is finished. You can see here a, 
small log where you can see all the files that were generated. Uh, these files are targeted for different simu RTL simulation tools. So you can choose from. Uh, if you have a predilect RTL simulation tool that you would like to use, you can go to those files. But right now, we're going to stick to model time. Now, here in Quest Sim, we're going to go to the bottom console and we're going to navigate to our projects directory. Expand this. You can see that new libraries were loaded. And just to make sure, we're going to check on the files that were generated. And yes, we can see here some of the files from our project. So now we're going to open the generated script. It's here in the mentor generated directory. It's a tickle file. Here in the introductory comments, there's a line that lets you know that you need to set a variable with the script generation output directory. It is this one. We're going to copy this line. And remember that our generated output directory it's our project directory. So we're just simply going to set this as our current directory. And there it is, it has been set. So now we're going to source the generated script. Remember it's on the mentor folder and sim setup.tickle where we hit enter and I'm going to extend this after you source this script you can see a lot of the of the variables that are already predefined as well as, as some commands that you can run in this case we're going to run ld debug and this is going to cause to compile all the design files and elaborate the top level design. So now we're going to go and run LD debug. Hit enter. And you can see that it will start mapping libraries and compiling all the modules. This can take a while, so please be patient. After LD debug finishes running and every module has been properly loaded and compiled. QuestSim will automatically change to a new layout where you will be able to explore all the design units or the modules that are in your design. You can click on the modules to explore them. Like for example, this is the top level module. You can see the clock here, or you can click on the DUT module and you can see it has way more objects. You can see here some of the signals that we want to see, like uh, the write or read uh, signals that indicate if a write or read, op read operation is going to perform in the Avalon memory mapped interface. You can see the address. Of the Apple memory mapped interface, burst count, byte enable, write data, read data, data if the data is valid, wait request. And you can decide if you want to add some only some of this, but this depends entirely on your personal use case. Or you can simply decide to add everything, like we can go to the 
to the model explorer here. We can simply click Add Wave, and you can see that now every signal inside this module has been added to the waveform. And now we are going to run the simulation. You go to Simulate, Run, and click on the Run All option. And you go back to the wave. And we're going to undock this because we want full visibility. And now you can see that the waveform has been properly populated. You can see now how everything is behaving. We're going to zoom out a little bit. You can see here the, the first cycles for the for the unknown data. And after that, everything starts behaving normally. You can see here This is the read data. This is the write data. You can you can also explore for whenever read and write operations are occurring. So yeah, this is how you can use the RT your RTL simulation tool to to see the behavior of, of your of your design when running on your on your hardware. This concludes this training. My name is David Garcia. Thank you and have a good day.